So far we've looked at pointers to various types of data. In this topic, we'll look at a rather different type of pointer, one that points to functions. Now, code, as translated into machine language, is a type of data. The code for a given function resides at some location in memory. And function pointers hold the address at which some function's code begins. Line 27 of our example code here shows the uh, declaration of a function pointer. The syntax is a little intricate. You put a star before the pointer name, which is fp, and then you enclose both of those in parentheses, and then you follow that with a parenthesized list of parameter types for the target function. Now, as with function prototypes, these parameter types may and generally do omit the parameter name, since it's only the type that is of interest in the declaration. And then finally, the int that uh, starts the declaration indicates the return type of the target function, and thus has only indirectly to do with FP itself. Now, this odd syntax will be more completely explained and generalized in a later segment, but for now, note that the parenthesized asterisk implies that FP is first a pointer, and that after dereferencing it, it is then treated as a function <coughs> and called. And this reflects the way FP will be used in code, dereferenced, then called. Declarations of complex types always reflect the sequence of operations you would perform on the variable in code. And this declaration also shows something important about function pointers. A given function pointer may not point to just any function. It must point to a function with a specific set of parameters and a specific return type, as reflected in the pointer declaration. And thus, fp may point to any function that takes exactly two integer parameters and returns an int. And examples of that are is less up here and uh, is greater, for instance. But it may not point to a function that takes different parameters, nor may it point to one that takes two ints but returns a non-int. Function pointers are very particular beasts. A major reason for this is that when you call the pointer's target function, you'll need to know what parameters to pass and what return value to expect. If this is intrinsic to the pointer's type, then there's no confusion. Initializing a function pointer is very simple. Function names follow a rule similar to that for unadorned array names. Using the function name alone, without trailing parentheses, gets you the memory address at which the function's code commences, which is exactly what you would assign into a function pointer of the right type, as we do down here on line 30. FP now points to function is greater. And evidently, is greater's code starts at location 4,198,175 because uh, we actually print that on line 31 here just to see what it looks like. And the output down below shows that value. So um, that sort of leads to question number one here. Do you think that address alignment rules, like the divisibility by 4 bit, do you think that those apply to machine language instructions, at least on the architecture used for this example? Why or why not? And based on earlier pointer printouts and on this example, what's the relative position of the machine language code and the data in memory? Where are they relative to one another, again, at least on this example machine? Answer one. The address of isGrader is evidently odd. Apparently there's no alignment rule for machine language instructions, at least in this architecture. And it's a good bit lower value than the data addresses we've encountered thus far, which suggests that the code, machine language code, resides earlier in memory than the data. Again, at least on the machine used for the example run. Now, on lines 32 through 34, We read in an integer array, vals, which we'll be using as test data. And then on line 35, we call fp's target function on the first two elements of vals. We first dereference fp, 
to get its target function, which is is greater in this case, and then we call the result of the dereference passing two integers and getting back an integer which we use as a boolean indicating whether the first integer is greater than the second and the result in this case is one or true uh, so we do the printf on line uh, 36 down here. Now the parentheses around star fp on line 35 are important. Both the dereference and the function call are operators. Per our earlier lecture segment on the operator precedence table, the function call has higher precedence. But we want to dereference first and then call the resultant target function, thus the parentheses around the dereference. And again, note the parallel syntax of this expression and the declaration of fp. Now, one of the most useful applications of function pointers is as a way of specifying some fundamental behavior to another block of code by passing the other block a pointer to a function that implements that behavior. For instance, in our example we have two integer comparison functions, is less and is greater. Either may be the target of FP since they have the same parameter types and return type. In the do while on lines 38 through 41 down here, sorry 51, what we do is ask the user to uh, enter less than or greater than or possibly a cue to quit and based on the response we assign the address of one of those two functions into FP down here on line 42. Using FP on line 43 then results in a different outcome depending on which function it points to. In the first loop iteration where we enter a greater than it points to is greater and the call returns 1 since the first element of vals is greater than the second. On the second iteration it will be pointing to is less but first let's look at uh, what's going on on lines 46 here on line 46 in an insert sort. This is where the real power of function pointers shows up. Above main is an implementation of insert sort. And this is an algorithm that should be familiar from LMQs in earlier modules, but by way of review, recall from those LMQs that the inner loop on uh, line 17 here decides where to put a contents of two insert, the item we're supposed to be inserting, in the sorted sequence to the left of index. There's a sorted area and an unsorted area as the insertion sort proceeds. Now, that line 17 loop moves the candidate insertion location, ins index, the place we think we might put to insert, down the array and moves existing array elements up. Now that happens on line 18 if we haven't yet found the right spot. And we do that as long as to insert is less than the area, or the element right below ins index, less than vals ins index minus 1 and thus we would assume that it belongs below vals ins index minus 1 in sorted order and we need to move vals ins index minus 1 up by 1. Now the standard insertion sort code has a comparison in that while loop that looks like this so we'll put that in for the moment but what we want to do is generalize the algorithm so that the comparison rule can be defined flexibly instead of automatically assuming a less than. So question two, kind of heading in that direction, what one symbol change would be needed to the standard insertion sort algorithm, as we've currently got it edited here, to make it sort in descending order? Coming back from a pause there, all you got to do is change the uh, less than to a greater than. 
and that way ints index will move down the array if to insert is larger instead of smaller. Now returning to insert to its original form here, we can see that it generalizes the comparison rule between to insert and vals in send thanks minus one by accepting a function pointer rule as a parameter and then using its target function to determine whether to insert should be placed below vals in send x minus one in the sorted array. The expression star rule to insert vals in send x minus one here returns true if to insert should go before vals in send x in the array. Now, as the output shows, after the user enters greater than, we pass is greater to insert sort, and then we get a decreasing order sort. Then on the next loop, the user enters less than, we make fp point to is less, and thus pass is less to insert sort, and when we print out the result, we get increasing ordered sort. By passing the address of is less or is greater, we can customize the behavior of insert sort to sort in either increasing or decreasing order. And of course, by creating and passing some other function of the same type as is less and is greater, we could make insert sort follow any other desired sorting rule. Using function pointers to customize behavior in this fashion is their most important application. So here's a bit of external research for you. Look up the QSort library for C. And question three is, what include file do I use to get QSort? And then why does QSort's function pointer parameter point to a target function that takes void star parameters? Coming back from a fair amount of research, I should think, and a bit of thinking, you need to include standard lib.h, first of all, and the function pointer's target type takes void star parameters so that it can be used to compare any type of element, not just an int. And this is somewhat reminiscent of earlier LMQs where you wrote general scanning and array manipulation routines using void star pointers so that you could have arrays of varying types, as you may recall. Look this uh, QSort concept over carefully. You may be writing something similar for insertion sort in the lab for this module.